What's up, YouTube? Uh, today, we are moving forward on the Datsun. Uh, it's going to be a little different because I have a bunch of little tedious things that are essentially the same thing that has been going on with the engine bay that I need to do to other areas of the car. So today's going to be one of those magic editing days where every time I snap my fingers, uh, we are on to something else and most likely with the results of it. So the first thing I got to do is clean up the shop as it is an absolute mess. Even though I have the coverings down from painting, there's still trash all over the floor, tools that need to be picked up. So let's get that done first. And like that, the shop is pretty well cleaned up, except all the random projects that I got laying on the floor that I haven't gotten around to doing. From here, we gotta work on this area right here. So this is the wiper cowl, and it wasn't painted with the engine bay, but it's gonna be the same kind of coating as what's going on here. But the coating that I'm gonna be using has a pretty wide spray pattern so with these tight areas I'm gonna try and use their canned product on all this so that means I have to sand it prep it and then I can spray it well this pretty much gives away what I'm going to be using on other certain areas of the car but this is the coating that is going to be in the wiper cowl area and all the other miscellaneous places that might see a little bit more abuse. And this is Raptor coating. Now, for a lot of areas, I will be using uh, the two-part truck bed liner, which is uh, it's a lot harder, a lot sturdier, can handle a lot more. But with these little areas that aren't going to see like rocks and stuff, I figured this 1K or one part truck bed liner would do the job just fine. So let's get started and in three, two, one, bam, look at that. So it is now coated. So I took, originally what I did is I followed the instructions for the Raptor and then I ended up running into a problem. but. I ended up sanding down everything with 120, just like it said on the can to do, and any bare metal that popped up while I was doing it, I hit it with some self etching, let that dry. You can't see it now, but inside there, there was a couple of holes um, on the back side of that, this bracket right here, from where the original hood latch was that I had just never welded. So I, Put some seam sealer over that that way I, there no water would get in behind and rot the car from that section so overall it looks pretty good but this is not the raptor liner i actually ran into an issue and that was the can didn't fit in the space that it was meant to and i don't know why it didn't click in my brain while i was sanding it to even bother trying it because yeah it definitely didn't fit and then when I did spray because there are some angles you just can't get to with a spray can I ended up with giant runs across the backside so it was kind of a fail not because of the product but because of the usage I mean it's technically bed liner it's not supposed to be used in itty bitty spaces so I ended up going to this this guy right here so this is Herculiner now I didn't realize I still had this can so I actually went through was trying to figure out what to do and I bought the bed liner from Harbor Freight that was paint on because it was 60 bucks compared to 40 bucks for a quart at the paint store or at the uh, auto parts store and then I came home and while looking for the paint tray found this. This Herculiner is about three and a half years old. I'm surprised that it still works, but the reason the can looks the way it does is uh, because I decided to open it up and figure out if it was still good. I went to use the paint can lid popper deal. I don't know what they're actually called. And the Herculiner had literally sealed the container shut, so I had to cut 
pry and do everything you should see the can itself it is mangled but because it's still good after three and a half years and because of what I'm about to do I decided to hammer the lid back on and duct tape it shut to try and save this can in case something happens with the next part of the project is it gonna work no idea so yeah if you're unaware of what this can was originally used for, uh, I bought a 2004 Nissan Xterra from a family member that blew up the motor, and I used that as my like first off-roady vehicle. Um, got it stuck in a big mud hole at a mud event. It was crazy, but anyways, um, it had some rust and some dings and some dents, so I sanded down the bottom half of the Xterra. And I rhino line, or not rhino line, herculined the whole bottom section of the Xterra. So if that is something you want to take a look at, uh, it's on my Facebook and my Instagram. That gives you an idea of the kind of projects that I was doing before I started this channel. But overall, this is now protected, and I'm kind of on the edge about the overall texture really wanted a smoother texture which you get with paint cans but the actual bed liner uh, is more sturdy it's gonna last longer and because I got I was able to use a paintbrush even though I am covered I managed to get in all the nooks and crannies over here <laughs> I managed to get all the nooks and crannies covered so instead of bare metal from the blaster and what he missed when he epoxy primed everything is now covered and safe. Now this is the next part of the project. Uh, you'll see all the welding that's been done uh, and this welding is at this point almost four and a half, five years old. Uh, I did it while I still lived in Illinois and surprisingly enough it's not completely rusted to heck and it's still holding nice and strong. So, I'm going to hit this all with a wire wheel and then uh, seam seal this. And if you're wondering why the floor is cut up and why there is angle iron welded to the floor, uh, it's because I went to a race bucket seat and being that I am not only a tall dude but a wide dude, just naturally, um, I ended up having to go with a bigger seat. And the bigger seats will not fit in just about any Datsun, uh, especially 75 and up because they have the catalytic converter hump where that welded section is on the trans tunnel. So you have to cut that out to get a seat in there, especially if you're a tall guy like me. Uh, that way it goes down to the floor and you're not hitting your head on the roof of the car all the time. And speaking of being a tall guy, I don't want feel like being on my hands and knees with a wire wheel for all the time that it's going to take to get those seams all sealed up. So we have a treat. Um, I am going to put this on this. This is my homemade rotisserie. And before anybody says anything, it has been used. If you've known me for at least four years, then you recognize this. If you don't know me uh, for that long, or you haven't followed my Instagram or anything like that for that long, then you'll have never seen this before. But uh, this had my car on it, strapped to a trailer, and drove 200 miles to have it originally blasted. So this thing definitely holds up. And what it is, is it's essentially three engine stands that were cut. I uh, used one for the red sections that you see, and brought it up to height, and then braced it. And then these are specific brackets that are for the mounting points of the bumpers on the Datsun. And all of that then allows me to have the car lifted in the air and spin it around without ever touching the roof to the bottom part of the stand. It can, it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get it all set up and get the car lifted. So with the snap of my fingers, it'll be on the rotisserie. That way I can move on to the next step in three, 
two, one. Um, look at that. It is off the ground on the rotisserie. Woohoo! Made some progress. If you've never seen how this is actually done before, this is something new because I had a scare and don't mind this snack. I use these guys to lift up the back end of the car and they're high lift jacks. These things are sketchy. They're used as a last resort in off-roading and they actually tilted forward on me and this actually fell down on the ground on top of my diff over there that I hadn't re removed from underneath the car just because it was easier to store it under the car than to take up more floor space. But anyways, using a strap, another jack, and the two high lifts, managed to securely bring the rear up uh, of the car without it sliding forward or sideways or falling back off. But if you've never seen how people mount these, you got two bolts here, two bolts there. They're normally where you place tow hooks on Dotson. I mean, it's a good ways off the ground. And up here, there are two bolt holes there, two bolt holes there, and that is how it is held up. And because it's in those pivot points, I can rotate the car 360 degrees without it ever touching the floor. So, and like I said, this did make a 300 mile road trip exactly the way it is on a trailer to get blasted and then return home. Now we can move on to the next step, which is this guy. Let's get to it in three, two, one. And like that, it's done. Well, not really. I'd like to say it is, but I ended up while doing this, I ended up running out of seam sealer, running out of uh, epoxy primer and running out of the blue shop towels that make my life so much easier. So if you can see here, uh, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of seam sealer in this area and that is because in that area there was probably the biggest spot of rust besides the engine bay random hole. Um, so when I remove the brackets for the seats to make the to, to make the modifications to the transmission tunnel for the new seat, I had to patch in that rust. And so there's a little bit more seam sealer there because there is a bit more metal work there. So, and I went a little overboard. But overall, you're not gonna see it after the sound deadening or the um, heat protection is on the floor. So it doesn't really matter. I'm not sure if you can see it, we primed all of the, or not primed, we seam sealed all the holes on the firewall that I welded shut, as well as I laid seam sealer on the passenger side. Uh, you also note that there's a lot less seam sealer on the passenger side, and that's because, well, there wasn't a whole lot of modifications. The two black stripes of uh, seam sealer there is from the new frame rails from the welding that you know, kind of bubbles through, showing the full penetration on this thin sheet metal, so. And then the white oxidation over here is because I used this Evaporust gel right here. This stuff works phenomenal. I wiped it on with a good coat, and within a half an hour, it says to let it go for an hour to two hours, but within a half hour, it took away all the rust that was in that spot and created that like oxidized safe to paint over space. So really handy. If you can't get a wire wheel in somewhere, this stuff really does the trick. And the reason I ran out of epoxy primer is because uh, instead of buying a quart or a half gallon or a gallon like I should have from the beginning, I decided to use one of these guys. Now these are really awesome. It's a 2K primer. There's this little spot in the bottom that has a button and when you hit the button it injects the hardener into the can and it's 2k paint just like if you were to use a paint gun problem is is the overall quantity that's in here 
that can was enough to go from about here to about here, here to there. That's all it covered. And, you know, it, it's $30 a can locally. You can get it on Amazon for like 26 but either way, it's super expensive buying cans. So I, uh, I caved and I bought a half gallon kit offline and it hasn't shown up yet so when that shows up i'll epoxy prime the rest of the footwell area of the car but uh then at that point it should be complete uh one last thing is i would give a full 24 hours for seam sealer to set before i try and paint over it one last thing that i forgot about this guy here this this can honestly would have been enough but uh because originally i was just going to spray over the seam sealer and the little bit of scuff area around the seam sealer and call it good but i burned through the existing epoxy primer it must have only been a single coat that was laid after the blaster came and did his thing um i burned through that epoxy primer in a bunch of spots so i had no choice but to treat that metal again which is why I tried to use epoxy primer and ran out. These white spots here was from me testing to see if the seam sealer was good to go. And this was after, believe it or not, it's been like two or three days. And because it had paint over it, it sealed in the moisture, I guess. And it kept the seam sealer soft. So it's still drying even after a week. I know in time-lapse world, this has been all five minutes. But in reality, it's been about a week sitting here. And it's still not all the way hardened. So I would give a full 24 hours for any seam sealer before you paint anything over top of it. After the epoxy primer shows up, I'm going to hit that floor, get that taken care of. The fuel cell area in the back of the car, I'm also going to hit with some epoxy primer because a bunch of that got turned to bare metal while I fabricated that whole area. And then I should be good on the interior for the time being. And then the next video about the Datsun should be a real turning point. It's going to signify essentially the beginning of the return of the Datsun, I guess. Uh, it should be the last thing I need to do before I can put this thing back together and start to drive it. So, I, it sounds simple, but it's really complicated. But either way, the next episode or next video should be a really good one. And I'm really excited for it. So, until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.